dear brothers and sisters in Jesus. As we begin to listen to God's word for a moment, let's close our eyes and let us offer ourselves unto Jesus. We thank the Lord for the day that he has gifted us and for the blessings that he has in store for us. Lord, we believe that no moment spent with you will go away without your blessings and graces flowing into our hearts. So Lord, during these moments as we listen to your word, let your word penetrate the depths of our heart and let the darkness that lies within see the light, the light of hope and the light of love. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12, verses 29 onwards. Do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying, for it is, for it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters, we are entering into the season of Lent. And 2018 poses a little dilemma, especially as we start the season of Lent. Feb 14th is Ash Wednesday. And we all know Feb 14th is also Valentine's Day. This kind of now brings us into a situation trying to understand what are we to celebrate. Obviously in our heart and in our faith we know we celebrate Ash Wednesday. But at the same time for the world it's always Valentine's Day. A day when we project a pretty picture of ourselves. A day when we would rather go out to places, have good meals with our loved ones. A day when we've kept aside to have intimate moments of worldly pleasure. But here comes Ash Wednesday giving a greater message. A message that comes from God and a reminder to all of us as well. The message of the ash. I remember when I was, when I was very young, and I used to go for Ash Wednesday services to the church, I was very particular about which priest I would go to to receive the ash. Because, as we would all know, not every priest is very artistic in the way that they draw the ash on the forehead. You'll have some priests put a very a very casual cross on the forehead, which at times don't even, doesn't even look like a cross on the forehead, but just a little bit of ash smeared on that forehead. While there would be the other ones who very diligently would take the ash and make a beautiful sign of the cross. And I was always particular about this because my mother always told me, you cannot wash away the ash. 
So it has to stay on the forehead. And when you're young, the last thing you want is to have just some silly ash on your forehead and walk amongst your friends, your college mates, your university mates and think to yourself that I look like a perfect fool. And so I was very particular that the cross should be perfect and it should look good. And obviously the reason is because I wanted to put up a pretty picture of myself. Now obviously if the, if the cross is not put up well, it's just a bit of ash just smeared on the forehead, we would barely be giving it much of a thought. We would barely be giving our own beauty much of a thought. Because here stands the ash, projected out to the world, that kind of killed the whole beauty of what and how we are projecting ourselves. And that is something that we need to ask ourselves about today. What is the message of the ash? Why is it that it disturbed the young me? When I was much younger, why is it that it disturbed me? Was it because I wanted the world to see me in a particular way? And the ash was not giving, the ash was not actually giving the right picture that I wanted the world to get about myself. That pretty picture. Well, the ash is giving a far deeper message. When the priest places the ash, the priest says, Man, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember who you are, because you are far more than what you present yourself to be on the outside. You are far more than you present yourself to the world. You are dust. There is something deeper about you than just this body that will turn to dust one day. It's the message of the ash. The ash always speaks a language. A language to the world. That I am far more than what I make myself out to be. I'm far more than what even you make me out to be. There's something deeper about my existence. There's something deeper about my life. In the Bible we read about the land of Nineveh. They committed sin. They enjoyed themselves in wine, women, fancy. And as they enjoyed themselves... God who sees the sin of the land of Nineveh sends prophet Jonah to the land of Nineveh. Prophet Jonah would make his own journey running away from God, getting into a boat that is moving towards Tarshish. He hides in the hold of the boat, disturbs the peace of the people on that boat. They have no other option. They throw him out into the sea when the storm gets rough and it doesn't seem to be seizing. And Jonah is swallowed by a, by, a, by a great big fish. And that great big fish, three days later, would spit him out at the show. And Jonah would ultimately go to the land of Nineveh. A land for which, for whom, a land for whom wine, women, fancy, enjoyment, this worldly pleasure was everything for them. And that is why the things about God were forgotten. The things about holiness was forgotten. And it is to this land that Jonah goes and declares that your sin has been seen by God. And therefore, there will be destruction of this nation in 40 days. Jonah walks out of the city. And till that day, for the people of Nineveh, what was important was their bodily pleasure, their comforts, their creature comforts, their lifestyle, their enjoyment. Suddenly, what they thought was life, they became aware of the truth. The word tells us they all sat in sackcloth and ashes. They wore sackcloth, they took off their pretty dresses, they took off their luxury, 
and they put on ashes, not presenting themselves to the world as a pretty picture anymore, but presenting themselves to the world as who they actually are supposed to be. Giving the world an acknowledgement that our life is far more than what we thought it out to be. It isn't just about our pleasures. It isn't just about our body. But there's something deep about us. When they sat in sackcloth and ashes, they were giving a message. That life is far more than what, it, what we thought it out to be. And it's the same for us. On Ash Wednesday, that is what we believe. That life is far more than what we are making it out to be. Today we live in a world that is so body oriented. Everything is about the bodily pleasure. We sit trying to make up ourselves, put a pretty picture of ourselves in front of others. Try to get our cars, our homes, our luxury. We kind of make this life our destination. We act like everything is going to end over here. Everything is about this place. Everything is about the world. But our life here is not the destination. Our life here is just the journey. We are moving towards a destination. And that is the truth about who we are. That is what we are supposed to be. And all that we do today should be a reminder to us that we are actually moving towards that destination. It is not all about our body. It is not all about this world. Obviously, it is not that the body is wrong. It is not that the things of the world is wrong. It is not. Far from it. As John Paul II would say in his theology of the body, that the body speaks a language. So the body is not evil. The body is not bad. It's not negative. But the body is not all. What we have on our body is a reflection. It speaks a language. It obviously speaks the language of God. It speaks the language of truth. It speaks the language of the truth of who we are in relationship to God. And that's the same with the things we see around in the world. Be it in the birth of a little child, it speaks the truth about man's relationship with God. Be it even the nature that we get to see around us. The color we see in the different flowers and, and the vegetation around us. It's speaking a language about the truth of God's relationship with humankind and with this world. But mind you, it's only a reflection. It is not the full truth. It is a reflection. Therefore, this life cannot be our destination. We cannot act like this life is our destination. It is only the journey. A journey towards our destination. I remember coming across this young boy who was brought to our retreat center in Sydney. And the mother brought the boy with her. And she told me, the boy must have been around, around 19 or so. And the mother told me, Father, please speak some sense into this boy. And I looked at the boy and I'm thinking to myself, what the mother couldn't do in 19 years, I'm expected to do in 5 and 10 minutes. When I started speaking to the boy, it was obvious. He was not very interested in what I had to say. It was obvious that he wasn't even interested in being there. After I kept speaking to him for 5 minutes or so, without him uttering even one word in response, at the end of it, he looks at me and he said, Father, don't waste your time. Nothing is going to get into my mind. I want to enjoy my life and I'm enjoying it to the fullest. And then he asked me. I was in my cassock and outside in, in Australia, usually people are used to seeing priests in their Roman collar. While me being in the cassock, he looked at me and he asked me, is this what you wear all the time? And I said, yes. When I'm in the retreat center, this is what I wear all the time. And then he asked me, you're not permitted to get married, are you? 
And I said, no, we don't get married, we offer ourselves unto God. And then he told me, what do you do around over here? I said, I usually preach and I pray. He said, apart from that, you barely do anything else, do you? I said, yes. And then he looks at me, has a little sarcastic smile, and he tells me, Father, you don't have a wife. You wear a white piece of cloth that has no color on it. You just walk around this place, just sitting and praying and do nothing else. Father, go get a life. Go get a life. And that is how many a times the world looks at it. Go get a life. Because this life is our destination. I want to enjoy life to its fullest. And my whole idea of enjoying life to its fullest, I make it about my body. I make it about this world. I make it about my comforts. I make it about my pleasure. And that is not the truth of what we are. And that is what Ash Wednesday is giving us as a very strong message. That is what the Ash is proclaiming as a message. You are far more. You are far more than just a little piece of body. You are far more than just this worldly. And that is so beautifully seen in what we celebrate during the season of Lent building up to that wonderful day of Easter. And that very significant day when Jesus would give his body on the cross. When he would die, he would suffer. He would go through excruciating pain. And he passed on a message. It is not just about this world. Because there will come the resurrection. There will come the next. And that is what we are preparing ourselves for. That is why in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 10. Verse 28, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Because what is important is your soul. It's not that the body is not important, but the body will pass. And we offer ourselves completely unto God. Body and soul. And we don't make it all about our body. And that is why the scripture says, Do not fear those who just kill the body. But they can't touch the soul. In the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 3 to 4. It says, Do not adorn yourselves outwardly by braiding your hair and by wearing gold ornaments or fine clothing. Rather, let your adornment be the inner self with the lasting beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in God's sight. Let the adorning of yourselves not just be about your body. Let it not just be about braiding your hair or putting on your gold ornaments. But let the adornment of the inner self with the lasting beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit that comes from God is what is pleasurable to Him. So it's not just about this world. This world is not about, this world is not what our life is about. It's far more than that. As we would read in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be different. Be transformed within your heart. And that is what this day is giving as a message to us. That is what that ash is giving as a reminder to us. Do not be conformed to this world. Man, you are dust. All that you see around you today and you take pleasure in today, it's all just dust. Do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed. Be transformed by renewing your minds so that you will know what God's will is. As First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8 says, For while bodily training is of some value, godliness 
is of value in every way. Bodily training is good. It's not evil. It's not bad. Because the body is a beautiful gift from God. But the word says, Godliness is of value in every way. And that is what we strive for. As it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That is what godliness gives us. That is what we are going to be, we are going to be searching for this whole season of Lent. That bodily goodness, that godliness within us, that holiness within us. That is what Jesus wants of us today, because that is what Jesus would see. As 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 says, God doesn't see as man sees. Man sees on the outside, God looks at the heart. This Ash Wednesday, when the ash is placed on our forehead, let us remind ourselves of what wonderful human beings God has made us. They are truly miracles. Amazing miracles of God. And it's so striking that from dust, from nothingness, He would create someone so beautiful as you and me. But when we see this beauty and we enjoy this beauty, let us not make it the destination. Rather, let it remind us of the one who created us that way. Of how beautiful He is. And how we look at Him and we find our peace. Let's ask Jesus for this grace during this Ash Wednesday. Let it be a conviction in our heart when the ash is placed on our forehead. To look at the world and tell them, I'm far more than what this world presents me out to be. I'm a reflection of God. And I need to work on that godliness. Let us close our eyes and pray. And let us offer ourselves unto Jesus. Lord, I thank and praise you for this beautiful day where I am reminded of the wonderful reality of who I am and what you expect me to be. Lord, to believe and to understand that I am far more than what the world makes me out to be. I am far more than many times what I make myself out to be. Lord, let me never be this worldly, but let my desire always be for preparation for the next. Open our hearts and our minds this Lenten season to find you, O Lord, and to find in you our destination. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed Lenten season.